like to call the county commissioner regular meeting for February 5th to order. Appreciate those in attendance. I'm not sure where Commissioner Asciutto might be, but we're going, there he comes. All right, we're going to proceed. And uh, <clears throat> if you would, please join me in prayer if you would like. And after I have us a prayer, we're gonna do the Pledge of Allegiance and I ask that you join us if you would like in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'd like, bow your heads. Father, we do come to you thankful for this beautiful day you've given us. It's February 5th, but I think the temperature was above 50 today, and we appreciate that. We appreciate the sunshine. It's going to be a beautiful week in Stanley County. Every day is a beautiful day in Stanley County, whether it's rain, whether it's cloudy, or whether the sun shines. And, Lord, as we meet tonight, we just ask that you would direct each of us in making wise decisions. These things I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. Let's let uh, Commissioner Eford have a moment to get his computer working here. Please, Joe. <laughs> he did hit the on and off button, so. <laughs> you got it? Okay. Okay. I would ask the commissioners to look at the agenda, if you haven't already, and I would ask that we have a motion to approve the agenda or any changes that might be made. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I would make a motion we approve the agenda as presented. Okay, we have a motion for Commissioner Eford. Do we have a second? Second. Second, when Commissioner King, any discussion? All in favor, please say, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Uh, the first item on the agenda is public comments, and we have one person to have signed for public comments, but uh, Deborah, that particular item will be coming up as item three, and at that time, I will ask that you come up and speak uh, and give us the information that you have. The uh, Second item on the agenda is the National Future Business Leaders of America, FBLA, Collegiate Week Proclamation. And there's a group of students from Stanley Community College, and I would ask that you all come up and introduce yourself and tell us about the resolution that you would like for us to approve. I'm short, so just bear with me. <laughs> A good evening, everyone. Um, on February 11th through the 17th, chapters at colleges across the country will be celebrating National FBLA Week. Future Business Leaders of America is the premier national organization for college students interested in developing skills in business, leadership, and professionalism. My name is Toby Neal. And this is a particularly special year for the Stanley Community College FBLA Collegiate Chapter. We are celebrating our 50th anniversary. The chapter was founded in 1974, and that year Stanley Technical Institute, as we were then, attended its first state leadership conference and competitive events. The first award won by a Stanley student was a jar of pickles brought by the Mount Olive University Chapter as a door prize. So for our 50th anniversary theme, it is from pickles to president, because it is my privilege and honor to have been elected for this year's national president, the first to serve from North Carolina and the first to serve while a community college student. In my, thank you. 
I'll be happy to give it, and I don't charge too much. Um, <laughs> In my role, um, I will be going to Washington next week to lead the National FBLA Week activities. Um, as I go to DC and as we celebrate on campus, we appreciate the commissioners for recognizing the contributions of the chapter to the business, government, and civic areas of Stanley County. Former members are in leadership roles in all of these areas, and they credit their involvement in our organization as part of their success. I would also like to introduce other chapter members with me tonight, um, Gage Barrier, Lainey Pope and Tim Carabet, and our campus advisors, Ms. Katrina Sams and Mr. Dan Hazlett. Thank you so much for signing the proclamation, recognizing the goals of our organization, the history of the Stanley Community College chapter, and the observance of National FBLA Week. Um, I will be taking a copy of it with me to Washington next week so that I can point to the recognition and the support um, that Stanley County gives our chapter um, and all the support that you've given us through the past 50 years. So thank you so much. Thank you, and thank uh, the students from Stanley Community to join us tonight. And I believe Stanley Community College had celebrated their 50th, what, I think they started in 1971. I believe I'm correct. I was a mere 20 years old at that time, <laughs> and uh, well, that's a good addition for Stanley County. And I believe all the commissioners have, have had time to review the proclamation. And so I would ask for a motion to approve the proclamation. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the proclamation. Second. As presented. Okay, we have a first and we also have a second. Any other comments, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Do you all have more? I, that is all that I have. Well, so well I, ha I have something. Oh. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very pleased as a citizen of Stanley County that Stanley Community College has a young man that has been elected to the national, pre the president of the national chapter. And man, that's, that's a great accomplishment. Uh, you will remember that the rest of your life. Uh, you must be a great public speaker because if you weren't, you would not be in that position. I know that uh, the uh, Phi Beta Lambda and the PBL initials we recognize has been around for almost 50 years. And a lot of great students attended Stanley Community College and have leadership roles within our community. So as a member of Stanley County Board of Commissioners, I recognize you and your peers for the great achievement of becoming the national president. And I mean, that just blows my mind. And when were you elected? Uh, so I was elected um, on uh June of last year um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, June of last year. And I do know, I think you're going to graduate this spring from Stanley Community College. And like you said, you are the first community college student that has ever earned the privilege to be the national president. And from now on, I'll call you Mr. President. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now, I hope the newspaper and the radio pay some attention to you because they need to. I know Mr. Hazlett said that you are a political, I think you're political science. Is yes. Your major. And uh, hopefully someday you will earn the privilege of being in a public office maybe county commissioner, maybe city council. It could even be North Carolina state representative or either North Carolina state senator. And man, you have got the future in front of you because if I were your age and I were graduating with a political science and I've achieved national recognition, man, the sky is the limit. And I congratulate you Matter of fact, I've got a plaque right here to give to you. 
Uh, and if the Board of Commissioners would come down with me, we're going to make this presentation. Let me read let me read this to you. Hopefully this speaker will pick me up. This is uh come around here, young man. I wish I was your age again. <laughs> Stanley County. It it says, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it says Stanley County congratulates Toby K. Neal. Future Business Leaders of America Collegiate 23-24 National President and expressed appreciation to the attention his election brings to Stanley County, Stanley Community College, given to you by the Stanley County Board of Commissioners, signed by me, Willie D. Lawhon Jr. Y'all got that right then. <laughs> it's Willie, it's not Bill, it's Willie, except it says WD on here. And it says, Peter Asciutto, Mike Barbie, Patty Crump, Scott Eford, Trent Hatley, Brandon King. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank Man, you, sir. I am proud of you. Thank you. It's a great yeah. honor. Yeah, I am very proud thank of you. Thank you. It's, yeah. a, it's a great honor. It's, yeah. it's my privilege. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Good luck. You. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. Good job. Go ahead. And by the way, I'm not running for re-election, so I, I'm happy about that. Item number three is the CR 23-04 Alley Darwick conditional use and the presenter is Bailey Klein. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Give me one second. I'm going to get this pulled up. Tonight, the first item before you that I have before you is CR 2304. This is a request um, a condition for a conditional zoning for portions of two parcels that total two and a half acres at 24426 and 24414 in Albemarle. The property is currently zoned RA, which is residential agricultural, um, and Mr. Darwich is requesting that it be rezoned to Highway 2427 Conditional District. Allie Darwich has requested to rezone the two parcels totaling 2.5 acres um, in order to operate an automotive dealership. The parcels located at 24414 in C2427 contains 21.76 acres and 1.67 acres of that parcel is being requested for rezoning. The parcel located at 24426 2427 contains 0 0.83 acres, all of which is being requested to be included in the rezoning. Mr. Darwich has indicated that there's a manufactured home at 24426, which would potentially be used as the office space for the car lot if it meets criteria for the building code. Architect plans for updating the manufactured home to a commercial use have been given to the planning staff. The request for conditional zoning limits the use of area to only allow for an automotive dealership. A list of proposed conditions, which includes a limit on the number of cars, location of the entrance and size of the sign is attached. And I'm going to go ahead and move to that. So these are the list of proposed conditions, um, and some of these were amended at the planning board meeting, so I'll just read through these quickly. 
The first condition, the use of the property would be limited to, to only a vehicle sales lot and related sales office, a 10-foot vegetative buffer from the edge of the right-of-way to the front facade of the office, then a six-foot fence following the rest of the property line, unless it's waived by the adjoining property owner. One freestanding sign that shall not exceed 20, 20, 64 square feet and no more than two wall signs up to 32 square feet. One temporary sign or flag allowed for no more than 14 days at a time every six months. Hours of operation will be 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. unless a client makes an appointment um, that is needed after six. Lighting on the property shall only be cut off style fixtures and the lights shall be shielded and or angled to prevent light trespass on neighboring properties. The middle driveway will be used as the entrance slash exit and shall meet NCDOT requirements. Vehicles for sale shall be set back at least 10 feet behind the right of way um, on 2427 and no strings of pennants, strings of lights, inflatable attention getting devices or similar objects or devices shall be used. Um, and then a removal of a carport that's on the north side of the home. These parcels are located approximately 1.11 miles from a growth area at Frog Pond and 2.29 miles from the town limits of Red Cross. Um, Mr. Darwich is in agreement with these conditions thus far. He has indicated that he plans to start with 30 to 40 cars for sale at this location, and it could increase the number if the lot is successful. Mr. Darwich operates a chain of car dealerships known as Adams Auto Group, and he has recently constructed a home on the adjacent lot. He told the planning board that he wanted to operate a vehicle sales lot convenient to his home. Adams Auto Group has a central service location in Charlotte where all the cars will be serviced and prepared before placement on these sales lots. There are no plans for service bays, et cetera, at this location. There are, I'm gonna move to the map actually. So this is the aerial view of the property. Um, before the first request he had was totaling five acres, I believe. Then he downed it to three and a half, I believe, and now it's two and a half. So it used to come out behind um, Deborah's house. So it used to kind of go like this. Um, and he agreed to decrease in size to remove um, the area from behind her home and just have it, he owns this parcel, um, and just have it on this side. This is the existing manufactured home that is there that he is potentially going to use as his um, sales office. And then if you can see it, this if you can see where my cursor is, this white um, carport, he agreed to have that removed because it is so close to um, Deborah's property and a fence and um, vegetative buffer will go along um, this right here, this side. The cars will be placed in this general vicinity, um, as he indicated at the planning board meeting, the 30 to 40 will be placed in this general area. There are commercial and industrial zone properties nearby, including county general business and county heavy industrial. One parcel located a half a mile east of the parcel is an existing automobile sales lot. The lot adjacent to the west was rezoned to general business in 2022 and currently houses a concrete finishing business and equipment storage yard. Across 2427 and 600 foot east is a car repair facility which sells used cars which they have repaired. Despite being located near several commercial uses, this area was designated as a rural preservation area in the current land use plan. Under the previous land use plan, this was identified as a growth area. Mr. Darwich has indicated that the hours of operation will be 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The entrances into this property will meet all NCDOT site requirements and all light fixtures will be cut off. There is a septic system on the property where the manufactured home sits, which is proposed as being used as a sales office. The latest traffic count shows 14,000 vehicles per day. That was done in 2022. The planning board amended a few of the conditions as I previously stated, and then voted unanimously to recommend the board of commissioners approve this rezoning request for a conditional district. All adjoining property owners within 100 feet of the property were notified concerning the legislative hearing and the planning board hearings. So this is um, just another aerial view, but it just go, it shows you um, this concrete facility. This is Nathan Soltist. This was uh, approved, I believe, in 2021, 2020 um, for him, and this is zone general business, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is Mr. Darwich's home that he is currently constructing. Um, it's under construction. An existing sales lot here, and another existing sales lot is over here. 
Um, and this just is a zoned view. So as you can see, the County M2 that I spoke of earlier, that's across the street and about 600 feet up is right here and another one um, further up. And then Nathan Soltis is general business. And then this is the land use plan map. Um, all the green obviously is rural preservation and this small blue, um, if you can see it, that is the proposed area for the rezoning. Um, then you have the, I think this is Red Cross, yeah, and the orange and the red are growth areas. Um, so he falls shy of that. And I, I think there's one more. So this is hard to see probably on the screen. It's a little blurry, but you all should have received this. Um, and it shows obviously where his vehicles will be placed that I pointed out earlier. The existing mobile home that is potentially going to be used as the sales office um, and then the entrance. Um, there was some concern over which entrance would be used because um, he indicated that there's three ways to access the property, um, but he was okay with using the middle entrance, I believe it was, um, for the property, to enter the property. And that is the last slide. And that is all I have. Okay. Commissioners, any questions of uh, uh, Bailey? And, and before you do that, uh, before there's a question or before I open a public hearing, I've talked with our uh, county attorney, and I believe I need to ask to be approved to be recused from this vote. I own one of the dealerships that's noted, and I don't run it, but I own the property, and uh, I do receive a lease payment on that property and therefore I do have financial interest and I ask to be recused. I need a motion. motion. I make a motion that recuse. Okay. First, Commissioner Shudo. Second, Commissioner Hatley. All in favor of recusing me. Yeah. Motion carries. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Peter. Question. How much is going to be, how much of that land is going to be paved with, how much of that land is going to be paved with pavement originally to hold those 30 to 40 cars? That would be a question for Mr. Darwich. He didn't specify, if I believe, in the last meeting what type of gravel asphalt pavement will be used to enter for the property and the lot. Um, so that would be a question for Mr. Darwich. If, if you would, uh, please come up to, to where we, everybody can hear your comments. Initial plan will be just putting some crush and run in there to see how things are going to go. And uh, we might pave around maybe three quarters of an acre if we needed to. So three quarters of an acre is, will be the answer. Any other questions? Is there a particular type of cars that you sell in we, your other lots? Yeah, we, we sell uh, newer model cars, uh, pickup trucks. Uh, work vans, utilities. <clears throat> Most of our inventory is like newer models between 2020 and 24 models. Okay, and you plan to duplicate that here? On that, that is process? correct, yes. I'm curious, I didn't read anything here about um, the possibility of a turning lane, um, and I was just wondering if that would be something that would be something we would need to worry about and would you incur that cost if that turned out to be an issue with traffic if it's needed we will apply for it and definitely will will take the financial responsibility for it but as of now we have no plans to consider one okay. that the lot is not that big to to uh to kind of demand this kind of entrance any other questions one more. Ms. Klein, you had said that this was just shy of the growth area from Ridgecrest. Not, was that where? Red Cross. Cross. Yes. So how far um, is just shy? Um, 1.11 miles from a growth area. 
you probably put that in the. Oh, you're fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. How many cars could that expand to on that property? Max is be 70 cars, maximum capacity. And just to clarify on that one, um, it, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, obviously, it's not listed as a condition, but I assume that if they would like to, um, then the board could add that as one. If you feel that it's necessary to add a max number of cars, um, then you could add that as a listed condition. Anything else? I have a question. <laughs> um, how is this going to impact our uh, land use plan? Because we haven't, we just got it going. We worked, as, the public's worked several years on this thing. Mm -hmm. right. And, uh, you know, we just got it enacted back a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Here we are already trying to uh, change the land use plan again. And I, mm -hmm. I have reservations about setting a precedence for other sure. things. I know a lot of businesses are there, but have been there for many years. Mm -hmm. And so since the land use plan has been enacted, this, that's one of the main reasons. And uh, our agricultural commissioner, Mr. Troxer, had just put out an email stating that uh, at the present growth rate, uh, North Carolina was going to lose a fifth of the farmland in the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. and so this was enacted to help preserve the farmland. So that's, you know, the way I'm looking at it now. Sure. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Dog. Thank you. This uh, requires a public hearing, so I'll uh, open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here to speak against this rezoning request. Please come forward, state your name, and please hold your comments to three minutes or less. Don't see anybody coming forward. Is there anyone to come forward and to speak for this zoning request? I'll declare the public hearing closed and ask my fellow commissioners what's your desire on this uh, zoning request. Mr. Chairman, could I ask Bailey one more question, please? Sure. Bailey, are there going to be any on-site retention ponds or anything on this property? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no, sir. Is it, is it the ground that's been disturbed? Is it more than an acre? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, because I know if it's more than an acre, then you know DEQ would have to have a stormwater permit, and I didn't know if there were any uh, either underground or above ground retention ponds for this this property. Because I, I didn't, I read in here somewhere about somebody was talking about the the runoff. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, we did have someone sign up for public comments, and I told them it would be taken care of at this time. And I think it was Deborah. And, yes, would you come forward, state your name, and tell us whether you're for or against, and give us the reasons, please. Uh, my name is Deborah Streskowski, and I do own the property that is adjacent. Um, I really only signed up tonight because I had a question about uh, what would happen if Mr. Darwich got the rezoning and then wanted to leave the area or sell the property. Could it become something other than it? And I was speaking with him earlier and he said, no, this is just for this one thing and then any other use would have to go through the same process. So, you know, I did speak at the um, initial meetings and of course, as the homeowner there, my preference would have been for everything to remain as it was. But Mr. Darwich has been very good about amending his application, um, preserving the land behind the house. And so, um, you know, I hope that it'll be a good, a good development and a good relationship with him. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, in protest of it anymore. <laughs> but 
I appreciate your letting me speak and uh, make your decision. Thank you. I guess I should have let you speak during open, <laughs> during the, the uh, open time, but I didn't. Am I in trouble? <laughs> okay, I'm not in trouble according to our attorney. All right, so what's the pleasure of the board? I just want to make a make a comment. You know, these things are pretty tough. I try to look at each one of those individually. I'm just, you know, that's a high traffic area with a lot of visibility. And then you, know, you go from 30 to 70 cars and you start paving over and doing the, the thing. And I'm just not, not at this time willing to change our um, ordinance for that. That's all I'm going to be a no on that. Well, you can. You can. Okay. Oh, I, I can't get my thing. Okay. I make a motion to design, deny the rezoning request CR 23 04, which would create a conditional zoning for a vehicle sales lot. Although this is located near existing commercial properties, it is a rural preservation area as identified in the land use plan. Okay, we have a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? I'm going to ask that you raise your right hand when you vote. All in favor of the motion to deny, please raise your right hand. That's, huh. Any opposed? That's all of them. It's six, six to deny, and that would be the six that are voting on this matter. So uh, the motion to deny has been made and passed and uh, no other discussion uh, at this time we'll go to planning board appointments Bailey Klein please come forward Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, the next item I have before you is board appointments um, of three members for the Stanley County Planning Board. The Stanley County Planning Board consists of seven members appointed by the Board of Commissioners in staggered three-year terms. Terms for three board members expires in February and new appointments are needed. The three positions currently held by Michael Williams, David Underwood, and Tim Vesperman expire this month. Mr. Williams and Mr. Underwood um, have served several multiple terms, which Mr. while Mr. Fesperman has served one full term. All three have indicated a, willing, a willingness to continue serving and have submitted updated applications. Each of these three board members bring variety of backgrounds to the board. Mr. Fesperman is the past city administrator of Locust and has planning and zoning experience from working there. Mr. Williams is retired military and currently works for the federal government. And Mr. Underwood is both a farmer and an accountant. All have been regular in attendance and have been thoughtful and thorough board members. It is helpful to have some consistency on the planning board and a variety of background and experiences. Our other applicant received um, at this point is from Shawana Long from Albemarle. She's an educator and a master's degree um, graduate from Pfeiffer. All applications of volunteers willing to serve on the planning board are included in your packets and current members will serve, um, will continue to serve until replacements are appointed. Please appoint three members to the planning board to serve three year terms expiring in February of 2027. Bailey, are you finished? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Okay, it's all right. <laughs> That's my fault. Okay. Uh, commissioners, I think everybody's had time to review each applicant and uh, I'm going to hope I'm going to open the floor for a motion. So would someone like to approve one at a time? We got three to approve. We can do all three if that's what you all would like. I'm okay with three. I'd like to make a motion there. Okay. Right, do we have a second? Second. Commissioner Crump, 
Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Thank you, Bailey. Mm -hmm. Candace Louder. You got another resolution tonight, huh? Yes, sir. We're not giving any more awards out, so. <laughs> Coming for something different this time. Okay. Uh, good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Um, you should have included in your packets an authorizing resolution for a building reuse grant. Uh, this resolution will authorize County Manager Lucas to sign the application and all the associated reporting documents uh, to support Project Jacket's building reuse grant. Uh, the project involves an addition to an existing building, will generate 11 new jobs with salaries above the county average. It will generate approximately 30, uh, I'm sorry, $344,000 in new taxable investment. Uh, the county will support the project with 5% required match. Uh, it's already budgeted in our department funds uh, that will fund the grant administration. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Candace? Don't see any. What's well, a pleasure to board? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the resolution. A motion by Commissioner King. Do we have a second? I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Eford. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Clinton, are you ready to come ready. up? You're going to talk about delinquent taxes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. I'm glad to be with you tonight. Uh, North Carolina General Statute 105-369A says the tax collector must report to the governing board the total amount of unpaid taxes for the current fiscal year that are liens on real property. And upon receipt of the report, the governing board must order the tax collector to advertise these tax liens. So as of January 29th, 2024, the total amount of unpaid county real property taxes for the current fiscal year, which is fiscal year 23-24, that are liens on real property amount to $1,828,537.80. Upon order by the Board of Commissioners, these tax liens will be advertised in March 2024. The stated amount will be reduced as the collections office continues to accept payments and delinquent notices were mailed Friday of last week. So they should have been in people's mailboxes today. So we will continue to take those payments um, throughout February and through March. And then we plan to put those names in the paper uh, late March. Uh, that's what we've always done in the past. So I request the Board of Commissioners issue an order to advertise these tax liens during the month of March 2024. To give you a little background, last year when I was here, the number was 1,840,384.29. So we are $11,846 better than we were last year this time and 145 fewer receipts than last year this time. So we're still moving in the right direction. I remember years ago, I thought we would never get below 2.5 million. And here we are at 1.82, almost below 1.8 now. So. We want to keep moving in the right direction. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Clinton? You explained it so well, there's no questions. That's man. great. Now all we need is a motion to allow you to advertise it. Correct. Who wants to make that motion? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we allow the advertisement to go in March 2024. Okay. Commissioner King, need a second. Commissioner Hatley. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, board. Thank you. You're still up. I'm still up. This is award night, I guess. Uh, award and presentation night. I'm here tonight to uh, present on behalf of the North Carolina Association of Assessing Officers the 2023 Joseph E. Hunt Distinguished Jurisdiction Award for a medium jurisdiction presented to Stanley County in recognition of outstanding achievement in tax administration and public service. 
and this was awarded back in November of 2023. And for tax office officials, this is a big deal um, because who wants to give an award to the tax man anyway, right? <laughs> Not many people. Um, we have never won this award ever for Stanley County, and we compete against all 100 counties for this. I've always thought it was a bit unfair because they split it into small jurisdiction, medium jurisdiction, and large jurisdiction. Well, there's only about five counties that qualify as small and only about five that qualify as large. So when those districts win, I feel like they just rotated every five years and then, you know, to let the next person win, or maybe Mecklenburg wins one twice. But then the other 90 of us are fighting for this medium jurisdiction award. So we've applied a few times um, since I've been uh, appointed tax administrator, but we've never won. And then I guess it was February of 23, I uh, spoke with uh, some of my staff, Tina Howell and Amy Whitley, who's our PUV specialist, and I said, what's, what's the problem that we can help solve that we're experiencing right now? And that was a PUV problem, which is present use value. Um, it's a program that a lot of people stay in for many, many years, and then their parents pass away or grandparents pass away, and they inherit the property, and they don't know exactly what they're getting into. And then they want to sell it or they want to transfer it, and they make mistakes, and they get kicked out of the program. Our attorneys, local attorneys, are very well versed on the PUV program, but um, citizens are not. And when you sell or buy something, you only sit with that attorney for about 30 minutes when you close. And I was like, who do you deal with? You deal with the realtors. That's who people deal with a lot face to face. So we designed a program to teach the realtors about the PUV class uh, and, and what goes on with it. So. We did a trial run with two realtors, with Hunter Holmes Realty and um, Larry McGuire Realty. We had, I think Hunter Holmes brought 10 agents and Larry brought eight. They came up to the tax office in our conference room for about, I don't know, two hours each time. And we just basically had class about PUV and how to recognize what was going on and, and how you could help your client in the future stay in the program or possibly get out of the program if they didn't want to you know, participate anymore. So it was very informative. The realtors loved it. Um, they sent actually letters of recommendation to the North Carolina Association of Assessing Officers uh, bragging on us and, and the program. And I've actually been contacted by the NCAO uh, for us to potentially present our class and how we did it at the following conference this year. So it's an outstanding achievement. Uh, it's named Joseph E. Hunt because he's like the founding father of property taxation, uh, continuing ed in North Carolina. I'm sure all of y'all have been to the School of Government uh, on UNC Chapel Hill's campus. When you go down into the basement and you're going into the, what I call the cafeteria line almost to get your food, when you walk through that opening, that is like the Joseph Hunt room there. Most people don't pay attention to it because you're focused on getting food, but uh, all the previous award winners are there and I see it, and so now I'm proud to say that Stanley County will be added to that list where, where people can see that. I actually had the privilege, I was in the last class that Joseph Hunt taught ever. Uh, I started working for Stanley County in June of 02, and I took his last class in August of 02, and that was the very last class he taught, so I felt privileged that I got to be in his class one time before he retired after 40-something years. Um, and then feel even more honored to win this today. So I don't need any action from you guys. I just wanted you to be aware of, of what the tax office had accomplished and we're proud of it and I want you to be proud of it. So, thank you. Any questions? Clinton, uh, are any of your staff members here? They are not here tonight. They wanted to go okay. home and, and eat, I think. I can't blame them. Yeah, yeah. I can't either. You cannot so. blame them. So. You sure you don't want your picture made with us? <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise I won't speak very long, but okay. be, we'll be glad to have a picture made with well, you. I, I'm on and, camera, and, so. And I'm, I, I'd like to invite our uh, state representative, Wayne Sasser, to come up and have what, a picture. Whatever you would like to do. All right. We want a picture. Sure. Hey, I didn't dress up tonight for just <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank Big you. Deal. Yes, it is. Good deal. Here, I'll even hand you the plate. <laughs> Come here, Wayne. Congratulations. Here, don't you want to put your hand on it? Oh, Come on. He's our tax collector. We've got to get in here. <laughs>
He gets us that 1.8 million. No, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We appreciate you postcards you send out. We broke you guys. Thank you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations, man. Tell your staff we appreciate it. Tell them thank you very much. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Okay, our next item is the department head presentation, and we have Sheriff Jeff Crisco here. And Sheriff, have you got have you got us an award? No, sir. Okay. No, no, I, I, no. You want your picture made? <laughs> Y'all don't want your picture made with me. <laughs> See, I told you, even the chairman doesn't. No. Um, Mr. Lucas asked me to come and, and speak about y'all, the sheriff's office, y'all's sheriff's office, our sheriff's office. Um, I'm the elected sheriff, but at the end of the day, it's the people's office. Um, but thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and talk about basically the last five years. And I promise I won't pull Lynn Claude Felter and have us here half the night. I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> Good, because we might leave if you don't. <laughs> I know. Um, as the sheriff of Stanley County, it's my primary responsibility to ensure that the deputies employed by me are held to the highest standard while performing their duties, which include protecting your lives, your homes, and property of our residents. We as an agency perform these tasks true to our core values, which are preservation of human life, integrity, professionalism, in, pain, in maintaining this high standard, we've made education and training a priority at the Sheriff's Office since I took office in 2018. One of the biggest challenges I faced when I took office was the opioid epidemic. From 2017 to 2018, Stanley County saw a 69% increase in overdose deaths. During the months of June, July, August, and September, Stanley County led the state in overdose fatalities. Overall, 2019 was much better though. We did peak May and July, but overall we saw a 17.7 .7 decrease in overdoses. From late 2018 to 2021, our county's overdose rate decreased by 29.8% and the overdose mortality rate saw a 1.2% decrease I want to add, during that same time period, North Carolina as a whole saw a 50.4% increase in overdoses and a 29.6% 29 increase in overdose mortality rate. In 2018, when I made the decision to run for sheriff, I made a promise and a commitment to the citizens of this county that I would combat our drug problem with every resource that was available. At the time, our county was and had been leading the state in overdoses per capita. It gives me great pleasure to tell you we no longer lead the state, nor have we led the state, in years. Our narcotics division has seized over 220 pounds of illegal controlled substances. The bulk of those controlled substances consisted of heroin, methamphetamine, and fentanyl. Not until recently have we seen an increase in cocaine. I'd also like to add that they have also seized over 47,000 dosage units of prescription medication. Along with the drugs we've seized in excess of $1.2 million in U.S. currency, and our investiga investigators have executed over 432 search warrants. Since January 1st, we hit the ground running. We have already executed 18 search warrants. These search warrants have produced a number of narcotics and weapons being seized along with, with a, num a numerous amounts of arrest. The main point of our operation is simply this. If you're gonna sell drugs in our county, we're coming for you. 
I'm not going to put up with it. As most of you are aware, with drugs comes theft from our homes and businesses. Since day one, I've instilled in our detectives the importance of going out making face-to-face -face contact with victims. Don't call them over the telephone to do case contacts. Make it personal. I'm very proud to say that our detective division has recovered over $1.1 million worth of stolen property. <clears throat> Shortly after taking office in 2018, at the time, Commissioner Jordan approached me and asked me if the sheriff's office would be interested in having animal control in the sheriff and the shelter under its authority. I explained to Commissioner Jordan if we were to take both entities, I'd want to do it with a fresh start. Just a few of those changes consisted of a new name and hiring of a certified shelter manager. After a long process in October of 2020, the Board of Commissioners made it official. I'm extremely excited to say that since the office took over the shelter, we've averaged a 98.6% live release rate. This means that 98.6% of the animals that have come into our shelter have left the facility alive, returned to their owners, adopted into new homes, or transferred to rescue partners. To the average person, this may not sound like a big deal, but it's huge for us. By maintaining this average, it's opened the doors to endless possibilities, including grants, statewide support, in addition to the support we have and will continue to have from our community. This is the first time in Stanley County history to see statistics such as these. None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the dedicated and hardworking members of the Animal Protective Services and the shelter staff. I mentioned earlier when I first started was training. Coming from a training background in uh, law enforcement and dignitary protection, I made a promise to our staff they would receive more than just the mandatory uh, in-service training that the state requires. We encourage and push our staff to seek specialized training. Examples are uh, farm specialist and computer and digital forensics. Prior to COVID, our office began active shooter training in our schools. At first, we started with officers teaching them the state mandated training. And then we broadened that scope and we started in inserting our volunteer firemen, our EMS, and our school officials. We were teaching everybody what each person's role would be, God forbid, if we ever did have an active shooter. Unfortunately, COVID happened. We had to stop. I'm excited to say now that COVID's passed us, we're starting to put all the logistics back into place and start that training all over again. We have several goals that we're striving for currently. Tonight, I'd like to share just a couple of them. There are canine and our drone programs. If you would have told me two years ago, we would use drones like we use them now, I'd have thought it was a waste. But we use them every day. We used them twice today. It, it is something that has astonished me. Um, recently, we were awarded a grant from the state and with this money, we're gonna purchase four more drones. That way, each patrol shift will have a drone. That way, there's always one out. Um, we're also going to assign one to our Criminal Investigations Division, our Narcotics Division, and our SWAT team. So far as of tonight, we already have eight certified drone operators. And to give you an idea about their certification, it's the first step in getting your pilot's license. It's the same, same class they have to take. Um, I mentioned our canine program. We're currently revamping our canine program. We have hired an outside third party to come in and oversee the program, who is a master canine instructor certified through the state. Um, came highly recommended. Uh, does a lot of the, the agencies in the county and surrounding. For us, our goals are very simple. We, can, we, just, we continue staying true to our core values, which are the preservation of human life, integrity, and professionalism. We will continue holding our staff at the highest standard possible. We will also be sending our staff to more specialized training 
to ensure we're keeping up with the newest trends. I'll close with this. <clears throat> some of you may know about this, some may not. On Sunday, January 21st, deputies received a call about a deceased body with no identification that had been located at the end of Palmerville Road near the wooded area and the railroad tracks. Upon their arrival, it was apparent the body had been dumped there. With the assistance of Union County Sheriff's Office, investigators were able to identify the individual that day. Investigators began putting together a timeline, reviewing camera footage and interviewing family members and friends of the victim to establish the victim's last known location. From there, they were able to apply for a search warrant for that residence and determine that the individual had passed away there. More interviews were conducted with residents at the home and it was determined that an individual there had aided the deceased in obtaining the drugs that ultimately caused his death. At the conclusion of the investigation, one individual had been arrested for felonious concealment or failure to report a death, and one individual arrested and was charged with second degree murder, death by distribution, trafficking opium or heroin, and maintaining a dwelling. That took me all of 30 seconds, but that was five days. From the time they got the notification of an unidentified body, in five days they made two arrests. That's unheard of, unheard of. I can't begin to express to you how proud of the staff that I have. Every member of that sheriff's office is committed to being the best they can be and provide, provide our county with the professional service that they can. I just encourage you, if y'all see somebody out, if you see a, a deputy, whether it's a bailiff, animal protective service, detective, whoever, take a minute and tell them thank you for the job they do. I, I could not, everybody always says I'm the one doing a good job. I guess it starts at the top, but you know what? They're the ones out here doing the job. They're the ones that make me look good. They are the most loyal bunch of individuals that I could have ever asked for, and they're loyal to all of us. Not just me, but to our county. They never cease to surprise me at their ability to do their jobs. But I just encourage you to take time and say thank you. That's all I got. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheriff. And we, we do appreciate you and your officers and the jobs that you all are doing. Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, Andy Lucas to talk about North Carolina Emergency Management Training Center funding agreement amendment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, the North Carolina Department of Insurance Office of State and Fire Marshal is seeking to amend our existing funding agreement for the North Carolina Emergency Management Training Center project. The Office of State Fire Marshal is planning to send the county an additional $5.5 million from a fiscal year 23-24 state budget appropriation and $881,396 from the North Carolina Collaboratory. For a, uh, and for those who may not know what the North Carolina Collaboratory is, that's a, um, that's a state uh, research uh, group. Duke, um, Duke University is also involved, and they do, they're doing um, research on the PFAS, the foam that the fire, fire, firefighters used to use. And so um, because we're going to have this aircraft rescue um, training facility, they're going to be doing some innovative research with those foams in terms of dis, um, the ability to, to, to get rid of it you know, and treat it and some other things. So $881,000 is coming from the North Carolina Collaboratory that will go towards that project too. Um, to install equipment that will assist in that, that research and development. And for a total of 6.3, uh, a little over $6.3 million. And so we would just ask the board to consider and approve that funding agreement uh, to recognize those additional funds from the state and put those into that budget um, for, um, so we can continue to move that emergency training center project forward. Phase one of that project is is moving closer and closer to um, being able to be um, 
you know, to, to happen, and that'll be the Swift Water Rescue and the Aircraft Rescue Facility that are um, across from the prison. And then Phase 2, which some of these funds will actually be used to begin the design of Phase 2, will be a dormitory, um, a warehouse facility, and a office um, slash classroom uh, facility that will be on the, the where the prime power park used to be, kind of uh, closer um, back towards Albemarle uh, uh, that Gus Shedd, uh, that the county purchased from Gus Shedd um, to help with this project, and so uh, with state funding. Um, so I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, related to this um, funding and uh, the agreement um, amendment and the, the budget amendment. Any questions, uh, County Manager Lucas? Okay, I don't see any questions, Mr. Lucas. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion we approve the fund funding agreement amendment and the associated budget amendment to recognize, receive, and appropriate the additional uh, OSFM funds. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Commissioner King. Any other comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, County Manager, you're still up. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, this next item is uh, exciting because it uh, means we're getting closer and closer to the um, sort of a 10-year project coming to a culmination with the uh, opening of the, the livestock arena uh, out at the uh, agri cigarette Center. Um, uh, it should be ready end of April, early part of May. Um, and so in preparation for that, uh, recommending some additional staff be authorized in order to adequately operate that facility. Um, the addition of this livestock facility coupled with our existing agri civic center facility creates a new event center complex that will require operational and staffing coordination collaborative um, procurement enhanced marketing etc um, so it's recommended the creation of a new events facilities and operations director at a at a, a grade 75 uh, to oversee the operations of both the, the livestock arena and the agri civic center really trying to create synergy between those two facilities and and really market this as a, a an, an events complex um uh the and so doing that and um, um reclassifying some other positions and repositioning them within the organization and also adding additional part-time salaries uh to that budget to, to provide sufficient part-time staffing for the livestock component of that uh, through the end of the fiscal year. And so I would ask the board to consider and, and approve the recommended staffing plan and authorize uh, the new events facilities and operations director position and approve the associated budget amendment um, with that, the, those positions. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Don't see any, so what would the board like to do? I make a motion that we approve the additional um, changes for staff at the Livestock Arena, and I look forward to the finally opening up. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Commissioner King, second the motion. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Which brings us to the thank you, Commissioner, not Commissioner, <laughs> County Manager Lucas. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You want your picture, No, no, I'm good. <laughs> you, you sure? I'm positive. Okay. All right. No pictures. Uh, consent agenda. I believe everybody's had time to look over the consent agenda. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Okay, Commissioner Shuto makes a motion. Do we have a second? second? Commissioner Hatley. All in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Which brings us down to board comments, announcements, and committee reports. And I'm going to start first with uh, Commissioner Crump. Do you have? 
words of wisdom for us? I don't have any words of wisdom um, <laughs> to share. I will sh uh, report a little bit on our Health and Human Services Board meeting. Um, we learned some very interesting information, and I know uh, Commissioner King can can add to this when it's his turn if he'd like, but um, our uh, Health and Human Services Department, they're working really, really hard, especially um, in a couple of positions with DSS. Uh, we are, are seeing um, the foster children, uh, the number of children in the foster homes is growing and it is doubled in some, at, in some months, more than double of what it's been um, traditionally. So over the last uh, two years in February this time, we were right around 31 or 32 foster children. And this past, um, this past week, we have been at 64, I believe. Um, and it's, it's gone up to 70 in the 70s. Um, and we have had the same um, individuals who have been you know, holding the line and taking care of all of this. And so uh, am I at liberty to, to talk about? Okay, uh, so I, I know, uh, Commissioner King, I, I thank you for getting the ball rolling on this um, because we heard the numbers at the meeting the other night and how hard it is on the staff. Um, and so he, he, he got busy and, and called our county manager and presented to um, all of us uh, this evening, and I think it was completely unanimous. We all feel that uh, they need additional help. So uh, there have been, we've approved two more positions for that department um, because I don't think um, that we're going to see this uh, decrease anytime in the near future. Um, I mean, we know the state of our union. And, and so anyway, this is one way we can help and I'm very glad that uh, we moved in that direction. That's all. Okay. Commissioner Hatley. Commissioner Barbie, Vice Chairman Barbie. Uh, I'd like to thank the students from the FBLA the Community College and especially to Toby Neal for the great award he got. And I also want to thank the sheriff Good money spent on those drones because I got to see one work firsthand. They work great. Thank you. Commissioner Aford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two quick things. Um, we had an, our EDC meeting last last Monday. And it was the first one that Commissioner Shudo and myself got to attend. And I, I certainly appreciate Candace and her staff and, you know, working through the RFPs and RFQs of, of people wanting to come to Stanley County. And I certainly appreciate all the hard work because people are wanting to come here and, and you know, people's wanting to you know, start businesses here. So I appreciate it. And uh, Sheriff, what you guys do with the Animal Protective Services, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, you, you might think that, that nobody cares, but that lady right there that I came to this meeting with tonight really does. Uh, she looks at all that. And I know you had an adoption event out at Carolina Presbyterian Church this past Saturday, and I think it went pretty well from, from everything I read. And, I appreciate you you going out and doing that because I know it takes officers time to do that, but it makes people aware of what the animal protective services that that what they do. So, I appreciate it very much, sir. That's all I got, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner King, Clinton, I want to thank you for what you do. You probably had the most thankless job in the county. Uh, you're probably one of the people that get chewed every day. Um, so I just I know you go above and beyond. So I really appreciate what you do down there and. Thank your staff for everything, and you probably get, you're probably less liked than the sheriff. <laughs> I can't ever think of a good time to come to the tax office. <laughs> sheriff, thank you for all you do. I appreciate everything, and you guys are doing a phenomenal job. And, and I think that probably more than half of your staff has probably got advanced law enforcement certificates now. So to me, that speaks volume about your agency, too, with the training you're doing. So keep up the great work, and thank you for all you do for our community. And, Commissioner Crump's right. We had a major issue that, that really needed attention with the um, DSS office, and that's something that we needed to take quick action on. And I th I'm really thankful for this board tonight coming together and, and doing that for the community and for all the people in the county. So thank you guys for everything y'all do. Commissioner Shudo. I just got a few things from that around the county. Y'all know me. I usually get around the county the best I can. And first, a couple of sad news. We lost two icons last couple of weeks. Joyce Little in Oakboro, mayor down there, she was always very a class act all the way. 
Um, hate to lose her. Just really got to spend a little bit of time on Gene Starnes passing. I tell you, one of the things is I was honored to doing was when I passed the torch from Citizen of the Year, Stanley County Citizen Year to Gene, that was one of the nicest things and proudest things I had done. Gene was tickled to death that he had earned that thing and why it took so long to get that for Gene because, you know, when I opened my store and was downtown for 18 years, Gene Starnes was always there promoting downtown Albemarle. And he was just a great promoter and he loved, loved, loved Stanley County. He was, he's just a great guy. He's helped deteriorate a lot the last couple of years. But um, man, what a, what a great guy and what a huge loss. And I'm glad he was presented with Citizen of the Year before, before he left. And um, just with traveling around the county, I like to eat in restaurants. Y'all probably know that. <laughs> with chopsticks now, with chopsticks now. And a um, couple of new Mexican restaurants have opened up. The Bravo opened up across from Bojangles down in Norwood. And I suggest y'all, if y'all like to give it a try, my God, the money they spent on remodeling that place is just incredible. And then for Famosos, Taco and Burrito and the old CC's, man, they did a beautiful job of remodeling that place too. And the food is good in both of them there. And talking about some old school, um, the Rosebriar was, you know, per purchased. And man, the first Friday of every month, if you go there, it's, you got to get there before five o'clock because there's already a line forming and they had their lasagna the other night and that place was packed and they have great food there. And then um, just me and Commissioner King, we went up to the Richfield Volunteer Fire Department. There's about 70 people there and we really appreciate those, the volunteer fire departments and what those guys do. They risk their lives to save others. And then got to end with the Almar Rotary Club up in Meisenheimer. Oh my gosh, the Harlem Wizards came and that place was packed. I think they would y'all sell like about 2,000 tickets almost or over 1,200 yeah. 1, tickets. But that place, that place was packed. They had to turn people away and it was, it was just great entertainment and raised money. Who'd y'all raise money for? A lot of it's going to go back to scholarships for the schools. For the schools. So anyway, that's a, there's a lot going on in Stanley County. Anyway, just wanted to share that. Okay, you made me hungry. <laughs> uh, the young man that has been elected the president, the national president for the uh, PBL, I mean, that that is outstanding. I mean, that is really outstanding. Uh, Appreciate everybody being here. Appreciate everybody that pre presented something, even you, Clinton. Appreciate, appreciate your staff and what y'all do. Uh, other than that, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Mo motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Motion. Gary's if you want you if you want your picture made with you the want chairman, your picture made, I'll be glad to pose with you.